Hi and welcome. Thank you for stopping by another edition of Blue Stained Glass Poetry. I'm your host, Marian Abdo. Happy St. Patrick's Day. It's been quite a while since I've done a show. Um, there's I've been very busy. There's a lot of things that uh, have been going on in the poetry world for me. So a debt of gratitude to several people. Thank you to the hosts of PA Live, Chris Bohansky and Rachel Malik for making my first television appearance a very welcoming one. It was a very nice experience to meet everyone, including the other guests on the show. So also in January, I made my first stage performance at the Rotunda in Philadelphia. That was really exciting. Um, stepping out of my comfort zone yet again. Um, it was for the Inked Anthology with Moonstone Publishers. I want to thank Larry Robbins for your continued support. I just finished a um, early poetry uh, reading for their anthology for April will be the Poetry Month. So this morning, my first national magazine interview was published on Two Sylvia's Press, uh, their Muse, which is on Stub Substack and also on their Facebook page. Uh, thank you to Kelly Russell Aragon and Annette Spalding Convey for all of your support. Again, it was a wonderful experience to collaborate with the both of you on this journey. So, bear with me. I'll be reading three poems today. My first poem uh, that I will read is I Am of Ireland. It's one of my favorite ones from W.B. Yeats. He wrote this in 1929. I am of Ireland, and the holy land of Ireland. As time runs on, cried she, come out of charity, come dance with me in Ireland. One man, one man alone, in that outlandish gear, one solitary man, of all that rambled there, had turned his stately head that is a long way off. And time runs on, he said, and the night grows rough. I am of Ireland, the holy land of Ireland. A t and time runs on, cried, cried she. Come out of charity and dance with me in Ireland. The fiddlers are all thumbs or the fiddler string accursed, the drums and the kettle drums and the trumpets all bust, and on the trombone, cried he, the trumpet and the trombone, and cocked a malice, malicious eye, but time runs on, runs on. I am of Ireland, the holy land of Ireland, and time runs on, cried she, come out of charity and dance with me in Ireland. And that is Of Ireland by W.B. Yeats. A lot of his, uh, he was born in Sligo. And if you ever go into the area of Sligo, there's always tributes to him, whether monuments or um, poetry readings. So the second poem is from my poetry book, Fractured Lot of Pop Poems of Brokenness, Healing, and Hope. And it's in honor of my great grandmother who left the Irish uh, County Wexford, Bridgetown area, and left brokenhearted because the night before you left to make your journey to Cove, which was one of the harbors that they left from, you had a living wake. I could not even imagine anyone standing there knowing that you'll never see your family again. So the poem is titled Anastasia's Tale of Two Harbors. As you left great grandmother from the harbor of Cove, I'm returning from the harbor of New York, both of us channeling over a vast Atlantic Ocean. I sit in my comfortable metal cabin, yet you endured a dangerous wooden cabin, in sorrow leaving you beautiful Irish green land behind. Anticipation runs through your mind of what America will hold for you as I contemplate what Ireland has in store for me. Great-grandmother, was the red, white, and blue paved with gold for you? Did liberty quell 
the sorrow of leaving our ancient land? Or will you serve the immigrants' platter of scorn and injustice? Yet my greeting was a warm welcome after 117 years of absence. It was a grand and glorious reunion. Great-grandmother, thank you for your courage to embark on that voyage. Daughter of Hibernia, your legacy is infinitely the muse of this author. And that's Anastasia's Tale of Two Harbors. So this week I penned a poem. It's called A Royalette. It's seven stanzas with seven lines. And the poem is titled 77 Generations. It's a short synopsis of my family's history or history related uh, with Irish, with Ireland, excuse me. 77 generations. Our family's name inscribed in the annuals of Celtic time. A double helix runs like a movie through my veins. Feeling the awe of our rocky, glorious green island. Watching St. Brendan sail from his Carrick boat. On a quest to the hinterlands. Bonfire tales spinning of the birth of Brighton's child. Making known the triple shamrock. Clan elders teaching children to recount legends and language. Carving ogham letters into runiac poetry. Raging words and lyrics steeped within our bloodline. Abundance was flowing like streams leading to the Atlantic Ocean. Bagpipes bellowing, echoing through forest glades. In honor of generations still yet to be revealed in the barony of Athenry. Viking marauders invading our treasured land. Galway to the west and Loch Gorman to the southeast. Bloodshed and tears of loss invaded Birmingham lands. The sons of Korish with battle cries and battle axes in hand. Scaled, ship, scaled ships fighting blood-red Viking warriors. Back to Scandinavia. Returning with smoke and mist in your souls. Harps of gold and the veil of glory gave us sweet peace for two centuries. Strongholds and strong bowl marching us back to Linster, seizing Dublin and Waterford, clans dismantled, Normans invading with bows, arrows, and fire, pleading and praying for St. Patrick and St. Bridget to save Ire. Last holdout of Birmingham royalty, Corish clans fleeing into the farmlands of freedom, sailing settling in Bihila Droce, near the Irish Sea, cursed and going underground, practicing our faith in dark shadows, holding on to epic warrior legends told in the Gaelic ancestral tongue, lore of sumptuous feasts held in mile-high castles and lands of poetic splendor. Failure of potato crops, over lies of guano dung fertilizer. Hunger, deprivation, and genocide? Born as a twin to a mother who just died. Leaving home after your living wake on wooden schooners of filth and disease? Knowing no Irish need apply. Hoping Scranton would be paved with gold. I am the clay of your wildest imagination, a burnt offering made 77 generations ago. I return, just as you had foretold, to heal the wounds of generational pain, recounting the language, your stories, reclaiming stolen Irish history, as Corish and Kennedy shook hands on that glorious Wexford day. Bagpipes are summoning every clans to Cordell Square. Now I stand in your honor and legacy. Tears streaming down my cheeks as the Irish flag blows in a beautiful March wind.
and that is my newest poem, 77 Generations. So if anyone has a poem that you would like me to read, drop a comment in the comments below on my, um, either on my Facebook page, Mary Ann Abdo, poet backslash author at uh, Facebook. Also, you can email the poem to me. It's M-A-R-Y-A-N-N-E-A-B-D-O at B-L-U-E dash S-T-A-I-N-E-D, another dash, glass.com. I will be more than happy to read your poem and give you a heralding high five. Thank you for stopping by Blue Stained Glass Poetry. Poetry is a creative response to the world around us. Please like, subscribe, and share my channel. Have a great week. Take care, everybody. Bye now.